Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Good morning. This programme has exclusively learned that a 19-year-old mum had her child tax credit stopped by a private firm used by HMRC after they said she was married to a dead 74-year-old man she'd never met. She's one of hundreds of people complaining they've been incorrectly punished by the American firm Concentrix, which is employed by HMRC to cut tax credit fraud and overpayment. Tax credits, including child tax credits and working tax credits, are government payments made to households on low incomes. Those receiving them include people who work, who don't earn very much. The Treasury say there have been 120 cases since last October where Concentrix didn't meet the standards laid out in its contract. But campaigners say the true number of people wrongly affected is much higher. In a moment, we'll speak to one of them. First, our reporter Peter Whittlesey has the details. It's so destroying. I've worked 32 years. I worked from the day I left school and, you know, full time. And to come to this. I've lost £64 each week and that normally obviously goes on my son. He normally goes nappies, wipes, food, gas and electric and whatever else he may need. They've absolutely unfairly stopped people's benefits on a really quite incredible scale in order to chase profits. Over the summer, hundreds of parents claimed their tax credits were suddenly stopped by mistake. They say it happened after an American company called Concentrix reviewed their situation as part of a government drive to help reduce the benefits bill. But Concentrix is accused of basing its decisions on totally inaccurate information. Basically, they were accusing me of being married to a 74-year-old bloke that used to live here, way before I did, um, saying that it's a normal thing for my kind of age and it's my sort of behaviour. 74? He was 74. But you were only... 19. They seriously thought you were married to a 74-year-old? They thought I was living with him. And they also stated that I was married to him. They didn't say he was my partner, they didn't say any relationship, they said married to him. When I had obviously spoke to the council, they said to me that he was deceased and died on the 5th of July 2016. And then they goes, well, you still need to get him to make contact with us. And I goes, well, heaven doesn't have opening hours, so what do you want me to do about that? You'll be fine. Tax credits make a huge difference to Sharon Scargill and her 14-year-old daughter, Jessica. But after they moved house, their tax credits were stopped. They say that I have been living here um, and they want me to prove otherwise since last April, living with another female. And I've got to prove that I am not living with this person. Yet yeah, you've never heard of this person? I've never heard of this person. It's also claimed even when Concentrix is provided with the proof, the company fails to respond. Now MPs are campaigning on behalf of hundreds of families who've lost tax credits. I've seen cases where people have tried for days and days on end and not managed to get through. It's constantly busy or you're on hold for many, um, many minutes, many hours. I spent 59 phone calls yesterday trying to get through and it took me an hour and four minutes to get through after I got past the line busy section. Concentrics P, uh, people that you speak to on the phone, if you're actually lucky to be able to speak to them, are completely and utterly disgusting. The customer, I've worked in call centres and if I had spoken to um, my customers the way I, I have been spoken to and I, I certainly know other people, have, uh, an awful lot of people are having the same problems. I'd have been sacked. If I alone have been contacted by hundreds 
of women, then MPs across the country will have been contacted by as many as well. Another MP raised in the House today that 12% of their caseload is currently from concentrics issues. This is clearly a massive issue right across the country. There's nothing really I can do now. I've tried ringing them, I've tried getting in contact. All they're doing is making me struggle financially because I can't afford to pay for the things that I need to pay for. I think it's certainly up there with Atos and Maximus, but possibly it could be the worst failure of privatisation in the welfare state that we've seen so far. I have got £20 to last me two weeks as of yesterday. To feed you and your daughter? To feed me and my daughter and for the bills that I'm supposed to pay and gas and electric. That's not possible? No. So if the electric goes out while we're speaking, I'm on an emergency. I haven't been paid for three weeks from my child tax, um, which obviously helped me with food so I could actually provide for my child. Um, I'm not relying on everyone else to provide for me, which isn't right. Um, this is what I've got left, which I can't really make proper meals with that. Um, the most I can make out of that is a sandwich. For this to happen at the beginning of the school holidays, you know, we just haven't done anything besides doing little things that don't cost him any money. I, I don't live a lavish lifestyle anyway. Um, but it's been dire. Wow, and since we've been on air, which is only a quarter of an hour so far, we've got another hour and 45 to go. We've had dozens and dozens and dozens of emails and tweets and texts from you with very similar stories. This email from Victoria, I have a three-year-old son and I've had my child tax credits cut, which is 250 quid a month because I've been accused of living with another adult, which is not the case. It's taken me over a week of calling for two to three hours a day to finally talk to someone. I'm now struggling to pay rent and not sleeping well, as 250 quid to a single mum is an awful lot of money. This from Julie. My tax credits were stopped seven weeks ago because... This is from Julie. My tax credits were stopped seven weeks ago because they believe I'm in a relationship with a woman I've never heard of. I can't get through to concentrics on the phone, constantly engaged. I resorted to tweeting them and they blocked me. I don't know what else to do. They've had my documents to prove I'm single for five weeks, but I've heard nothing. And this from Diane. My working tax credits were stopped without warning after I failed to reply to a letter in May. I did not receive this letter. The first I was ever aware of concentrics was after my payments were stopped. I've been accused of only working 15 hours per week. I'm self-employed with a small shop. At Christmas, I was working 15 hours a day. Never mind a week, and there are many more where those came from. As you'd expect, we asked the private American firm, Concentrix, for an interview. They said no. Instead, they told us, we recognise that individual tax credit claims can be difficult for all concerned. We adopt a rigorous process at every stage to ensure we manage this responsibly, in full, accordance with guidance set by HMRC. HMRC tell us... Payments to Concentrics are based on the quality and accuracy of their work. They will not be paid if decisions they make about claimants' awards are wrong. OK, let me introduce you to Lynn Fancy, who is a mum who says she hasn't received uh, child tax credits for six weeks now, and Craig McKinley, who is a Conservative MP who sits with a group of MPs who look at issues to do with uh, work and pensions and benefits. And we're also going to talk to a viewer in a second as well, Victoria Rutter, who the email I just read out, in fact, um, she's in Tunbridge Wells. Where is she? I'll find her in a minute. Right, um, Mr McKinley, what do you think of these cases? Well, I'm very, very troubled. The, the case of Victoria that you described, she's asking, where do I go next? They come to their MP, and it's just this last uh, couple of weeks I've started to get a lot more in my inbox uh, about problems regarding concentrics. Uh, a number of problems, I think. There don't seem to be a link-up between the HMRC records and concentrics records. It's not a live database, so once people have actually responded to concentrics and satisfied them, it doesn't seem to be going through to HMRC to actually get the, uh, the payments back on track. I mean, I don't think it's unreasonable that 
HMRC is attempting to cut down on fraud. That's, that's very, very, very reasonable. No, no, one, no one would dispute uh, but that. But it no seems one. that Concentrix and what they're doing in their service level agreement is falling far short of anyone's expectations, and, and I'm very, very annoyed to hear it. I'll be consulting with my colleagues on the uh, Work and Pension Select Committee, and I've got a feeling we may be bringing Concentrix in for a very serious investigation. I just wonder why HMRC is still employing them when they're making clearly making so many mistakes. They're making a lot of mistakes, but they they have been actually um, saving <laughs> saving for the taxpayer uh, over 130 million pounds so far. But you should um, be able to do that without making so many of errors. Course, absolutely, Th these level of errors I, I think are catastrophic to people's lives, uh, particularly if they're, they're people on lower lower incomes. And tax credits are the difference between surviving and not surviving. There's a lot wrong with the tax credit system, even when it's working properly. I think very few people have got any clue how to reconcile what they're owed with what they're getting, getting paid. I used to be something of a tax credit expert when I was in uh, practice, and it is a horrifically complicated system. System, one of the worst aspects of benefits and tax that I think uh, a nation has ever invented. Uh, Sarah, email. I've also had my tax credit stopped by Concentrix as they're saying I was living with a previous tenant at my old house, so I'm no longer entitled to tax credits as a single person. Rebecca, I had a letter from Concentrix in May. They requested proof of my childcare. I sent this three times. Mm. As they stated twice, they didn't receive them. In the meantime, I've had my tax credits reduced from 140 quid per week to 46 pounds per week. Mm. On a part-time income and being a single parent, this is having a massive effect on my finances. And I find myself having to choose which priority bills to pay each month. I fear that although I've done nothing wrong, I'll still owe them money. The stress and anxiety it's caused is now forcing me to be signed off work. Mm. Chelsea says, my mum has been affected by the tax credits issue. They had all the wrong information on her financial situation and have stopped her credits. Uh, David, my daughter had a tax credit stop this summer as her sister was working. And since they lived at the same address, she must be her partner. It took two months of supplying birth certificates, letters from us and our doctor and copies of passports before it was sorted. Mm. Sophie, I'm into my fifth week of no tax credits due to them thinking I was in a relationship with my gay brother-in-law. Now, you know, this, this would be funny if it weren't for the absolutely massive stress and anxiety uh, in people's lives. Lynn, <clears throat> you actually have a bill from HMRC for £2,500 in yes. apparently overpaid tax credits. Yeah, this is how Craig was saying that the HMRC and concentric systems don't... Because I'm being, going through concentrics at the moment, I've been cleared, everything's fine. But they haven't updated HMRC, so now HMRC have sent me a bill. When you open that bill and you see two and a half grand, what do you think? Uh, we call it brown envelope anxiety. Um, I've, it makes me feel sick. I, I, I um, have got to the lowest ebb I think I've ever been at the moment because right. of this company. And <clears throat> presumably you've tried to get in touch with HMRC and say, this is a mistake, this is wrong, I've sorted it with the other firm, please sort this out. And yeah. what's, what... I have to go back to Concentrix and it, three to five hours on the yeah. phone. Uh, eventually getting through to be told that uh, <clears throat> it was not able to be updated on their systems or it has to be done manually, which can take weeks. There's no time precedent set. Um, so I'm going out of week six into seven now, and it can be weeks longer. And there's nothing, I've done nothing wrong, and they know that, yeah. but I'm just not getting my money through. Let me bring in Victoria then. Hi, Victoria, in Tunbridge Wells. Many thanks for coming on the programme. Hello. Really appreciate it. Uh, have you had brown envelope anxiety, as Lynn calls it? Um, well, actually, I never received a letter to start with. Um, my my tax credit was cut at the beginning of August. Um, I didn't know why, and uh, I had a phone call with them, and it took me three to five hours a day for a week to actually get hold of them. They were very rude. They weren't nice at all. And obviously, when you've got three-year-old running around, it's quite difficult to uh, be on hold for that amount of time. Um, they, I'm losing sixty-four pounds a week. They've told me that I need to prove that there's nobody living with me, an adult. That's what they, that's what they think. Mm. And I've also got a bill for over a thousand pounds. They think that they've been wrongly paying me since April. Wow. So it's quite stressful. Yeah. Um, I mean, the fact that they say you, they've overpaid you a thousand pounds, you've got to pay them back. I mean, that, that's, that's anxiety inducing. But a it drop really of is. 64 quid a week as well. Just tell people what impact that has on your life with your little boy. Well, I mean, the rent that I get, um, housing benefit, is £700 a month as it is. Um, that's for my area. 
but my rent is 900 so that normally tops up my rent mm. um pays any extra bills you know food um i can't do anything nice with my son at the moment can't do any extra you know trips and things which we could normally do and it's yeah it's really really stressful it's a really stressful time so what what are you going to do what can you do <sighs> well they've told me that they're going to resend the letter the one that i apparently received um a couple of months ago I've got to uh, provide a year's worth of bank statements uh, to prove that, I don't know how that's going to prove I'm not living with somebody, but um, a year's worth of um, yeah, bank statements and I've got to send them my tenancy agreement to prove that I'm not on it yeah. and utility bills for a year as well. So that's going to take quite a long time <laughs> to get together. In the meantime, what's your message to not just the private, the Concentrix, the American firm, which is employed by HMRC, but to... Don't worry, I'm losing you. Can you still hear me, Victoria? No, don't worry. Lynn, what's your message to Concentrix and also HMRC? Mm, I, the message that's come through, because I have, we call ourselves the collective on Twitter, mm. um, the message has come, nobody's objecting to the checks. It's a completely uh, understandable thing that the HMRC have to do. It's the way Concentrics are handling this. Their staff need training. They've admitted they only get, they don't, the staff themselves have said, um, online quoted, that they uh, don't get enough training to even recognise a fraudulent claim from a good claim. Um, it's uh, using food banks, you know, being forced to use food, food banks. It's working parents as well. I know uh, Tasmina Sheikh, who's also on Twitter with all of us trying to support she's each other. She's an SNP MP, she'll she, be on the programme yeah, later. she's um, uh, one of her uh, constituents has opened a food bank and is now a full-time working father having to use his own food bank. Mm. It's, okay. um... Okay, there's lots to be done, Craig yes, McKinley, yeah. as you acknowledge. Which well, I think the problem here, and outlined by Victoria, people seem to be on hold for just unbelievable amounts of time just trying to get through to this company. Uh, I would have hoped that HMRC actually outsourcing this, we might have had a better uh, level of service, but it seems like it, it's getting actually worse. Well, as I said in their statement, HMRC say if mistakes are made, concentrics won't be paid. Is that enough? Well, they are on a payments by results, and I'm not surprised that they're actually looking at what I'd call the low-hanging fruit, which is you know, the claims people are living together when they're, or they're not when they, they are, which is, if you look through the court lists, which I often do, uh, it is a very common DWP case that people have claimed that they're not living with somebody else where they are. So, uh, and these are huge amounts of money. I mean, it's not uncommon for tax credit claims to be, you know, into five figures, can be up to £15,000 a year. Yeah. But uh, not in children. all these dozens and absolutely. dozens and dozens no, of cases that I'm reading. No, absolutely right. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, Craig McKinley. Thanks for coming on the programme. Conservative MP, um, a group of, uh, on a, a committee of MPs that look at work and pensions. And thank you very much, Lynn. Thank you. We'll talk more about this throughout the programme. Uh, this story was sent to us by Susanna on Facebook, who asked us to look into it. Some of our best stories come from you. Uh, I may have said that before. It's absolutely true. Uh, so do get in touch on this particular story. Uh, so many messages about your tax credits being stopped by Concentrix, which is the private company from America that HMRC are using to try to help them cut uh, benefit fraud. That I can't. We're actually being overwhelmed with them. So I'm just going to read one for now. This is from Louise. Hi, Concentrix stopped my child tax credits three weeks ago. I'm a single mum of three kids, two under the age of four. My daughter has complex health needs. We're losing out on £253 a week. Yes, a week, says Louise. They've lost my documents I sent them back in July and have now got my second lot of paperwork, yet they keep giving me inconsistent replies. They are claiming I'm living with someone, yet the person they claim I'm living with is actually living in America and has been doing for three years. I just don't know where to go for help now as they've written to me twice, saying I owe them over £15,000. So, we have learned that, uh, um, as well as those kind of stories, there's a 19-year-old mum who's had her child tax credits wrongly stopped by that firm used by HMRC after she was accused of being married to a dead 74-year-old man. In response to our story, HMRC have told us Concentrix, the firm, will not be paid if decisions they make about claimants are wrong. Concentrix is used by the government to cut tax credit fraud and overpayment. The Treasury has revealed that there have been 120 cases since last October where Concentrix didn't meet the standards laid out in its contract, although judging from the messages we're getting from you today, that the true number would appear to be a lot, lot higher. 
We asked the private US firm Concentrix for an interview. They said no. Instead, they told us this. We recognise that individual tax credit claims can be difficult for all concerned. We adopt a rigorous process at every stage to ensure we manage this responsibly in full accordance with guidance set by HMRC. HMRC, obviously we asked them for an interview, they told us this. Payments to Concentrix are based on the quality and accuracy of their work. They will not be paid if the decisions they make about claimants awards are wrong. Let's talk now to Sophie Bonner. He runs a group for people fighting Concentrix decisions and Tasmina Ahmed Sheikh, who is an SNP MP, whoops, I've just dropped my pen, who says that half her caseload in the last few weeks has been from people who say they've had their tax credits wrongly cut off by Concentrix. Welcome both of you. Um, Sophie, first of all, you've set up this group. The Treasury say since October there have been uh, only about 120 cases where mistakes have been made. What do you say to that? Well, last night I uh, ran a quick poll within our group um, just to see if that was correct. Um, I had in response um, 250 people that have come forward. I've added up a total of what the HMRC are now saying they've overpaid, and it's in, in excess of uh, £1.3 million is apparently now been incorrectly paid out to people because of a decision that's been made by Concentrix. Which means that they are expecting £1.3 million back yeah. from people on the lowest incomes. That's correct. Who are saying this is a giant mistake. Yes, um, obviously we can only go on what people tell us. Mm. Um, but from the conversations we've been having with these people, we cannot see any reason why they have been told that they've been claiming incorrectly um, based on the documents they could have shown us mm. or what they've told us they've sent in and their own circumstances. Mm. Tell us about some of the uh, constituent stories that are coming to you. Well, it's absolutely clear that concentrics aren't following due process and the government need to act. And I've had in the past 15 days, 50% of my cases have been from people who've had issues with concentrics. And the last five cases, out of which three have now had to go to food banks. One of the food banks was actually set up by one of my constituents that he's found himself now having to seek help from. And that because he was accused because it really is on the basis that you're, you're guilty and then you thereafter have to, have to prove your innocence. Um, on the basis that he was living uh, with someone uh, but it now is the case that that person was a previous tenant at that property now living somewhere else and claiming tax credits in their own right so there are clearly issues here and when asked then to provide this information and it's a year back you have to go in terms of providing this information it's often subsequently lost uh, and thereafter there's a backlog because there's so many of these issues that people are told it'll be at least six to eight weeks until that paperwork is processed now we're talking about people who are already in hardship they're receiving tax credits to supplement an already low income and it's causing terrible terrible distress to people therefore we need to have some action immediately what, what needs to happen and quick Sophie would you from say from our point of view mm. we believe the best thing that could happen is for concentrics not to open any new cases clear the backlog um, close down their, po their postal room as such because at the moment we get the understanding there is just documents everywhere get them to south to a point where they're starting fresh almost and not open so many cases at, in one go they clearly cannot cope with their workload mm. Um, you say you've written to the Chancellor, uh, we are, the HMRC tell us, look, when concentrics make a mistake, they won't be paid. It is payment by results. Is, th is that enough? How does that help people on a daily basis trying to survive, make ends meet? We've heard this morning through your programme, and I salute you for, for bringing this to the forefront, it's really important, people who don't know how they're going to make ends meet over the next couple of weeks. That offers them no help at all. We need to see action. I think your suggestion is a very good one um, indeed. So if I wrote to the Chancellor on the 30th of August in general terms about the number of complaints I'd had, and then more specifically recently um, in terms of a specific case study, mm. uh, and uh, we will use every tool uh, available to us uh, via parliamentary process, to make sure the government answers these key questions. Mm. Thank you both very much. Thank you for coming on the programme. No uh, Sophie Bonner and Tasmina Ahmed Sheikh, thank you very much, SNP MP. It's from you on child tax credits, working tax credits. So many of you have had your tax credits stopped by Concentrix. Sind tweets this I'm a victim of Concentrix. They accuse me of being married to my own brother. Tweet from Christian. My brother lives in housing association accommodation. He had his tax credit stopped and was told that was because he didn't declare he owned his own home. Unbelievable. Well, so many of you, as I said, have got in touch with us this morning, including Robin in Gloucestershire, who says she was accused of being married to her own brother. She was claiming child tax credits and working tax credits. We've got Michelle in Bolton, who says she's been accused of living with a woman 
who was previously a tenant in her property. She was claiming child tax credit and working tax credit. And Lisa, who's a single mum in Belfast, she says her child tax credits were stopped because they thought she was living with someone who she has been legally separated from for five years. Wow. Right, we've only got a few minutes, ladies. Thank you so much for coming on the programme. Uh, Robin, what do you think of this? It's a joke, really. <laughs> I mean, it, it is a joke. You can laugh at some of these things, except it's putting you into serious financial hardship. It definitely is. I've lost my child tax credits and working tax credits, which is the bulk of what I get each month. Yeah. <laughs> and how much are you down by as a result of their, what you say are their mistakes? Um, a little over £600. A month? Yeah. Wow. That is astonishing. Michelle, hi. Thanks for coming on the programme. Um, apparently, you're going out with a woman who used to be a tenant. Is that right? Yes, that's right. And what do you say to HMRC and Concentrix? Can't swear live on TV, can I? <laughs> Please don't, but thank you, for <laughs> thank you for giving us the sentiment. It's just, it's a joke. It's like made our life so much, so hard work. Um, they accuse me of living with another lady. I've sent the documents back in June. They lost the documents. So again, I've had to send documents two weeks ago. I've had no money for two weeks now. I've had to go to a food bank. It's just hard. It's really hard. It certainly is. Lisa, hi. Thanks for coming on. Yeah. What, do you, what do you think about this and the effect it's having on you and your family? I, I just think it's a disgrace. I mean, whatever happened, it is innocent until proven guilty. You know, they're telling us that we're living with people even though they don't have proof. You know, where, where is the proof that we are? I'd love to know where they're getting their documentation from. It, it's crazy. I mean, you, you sign declarations and all, stating that you're a single parent, you're living on your own, but yet that's still not good enough. I mean, you're given your words, you know. I, I just don't know what else you're supposed to do. Mm. I mean, it's just really putting people in difficult situations. Because of this, my housing benefit could be stopped as well, which means that my tenancy could be affected. Presumably, all of you uh, uh, agree with the principle that it's, uh, it's all right, actually, to, to, to clamp down on fraud when it is genuine fraud. But in your cases, they seem to be totally genuine claims, Robin. Yeah, yeah you, you can understand that they want to protect their interests, but... He's my brother. <laughs> it's, mm. Yeah. Not good. Right, what, what is your message, Michelle, to, first of all, the private firm from the States, Concentrix, and then HMRC, who are employing Concentrix? Just to, yeah, we understand you need to investigate, but at least we need some money to live off. If they do need to investigate, it's fair enough, but we're not getting any income or any help from anyone. So please just help us stop. Like They need to get, uh, sort the backlog out that they've got. They're not giving anyone time scales, so we're just expected to live off nothing, basically. So they need to sort the backlog out and have proof before they do this to people. Mm. Lisa, just... what, what would you say to them? I, I just think it's a disgrace, you know, even trying to contact them on the phone. I'd sent a photo through to yourselves. 122 times I rang last week before I was able to speak to someone. Did you? you? Know, yeah, 122 times in one day. And they asked me to ring back with the tracking number because I sent it recorded delivery. And I still haven't been able to reach them. And that was two days ago. OK. Well, thank you so much, Lisa uh, in Belfast, Michelle in Bolton, Robin in Gloucestershire. Really appreciate your time. There are so many of our audience in the same boat as you. I know that's no consolation, but it means we are 100% going to keep following this story and uh, try and get Concentrix and HMRC on the programme at some point. We'll call them every day on your behalf. I, don't, I have no idea if we'll get through or not, but we'll keep trying. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Thank Cheers you. for coming on the programme. Good morning. Hours after we exclusively revealed on this programme yesterday that a US firm was accused by hundreds of you of wrongly stopping your tax credits, Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs announced they would not be renewing its contract when it runs out next year. Concentrix is employed by HMRC to cut fraud and overpayments. The company says so far it's saved the taxpayer £300 million. It's also made many, many mistakes. Some of the stories we heard yesterday included a 19-year-old whose benefits were withdrawn because she was accused of living with a 74-year-old dead man, a woman accused of being married to her own brother, 
A bloke accused of being in a relationship with his grandmother and a woman who lost her tax credits because Concentrix thought her partner was her brother-in-law, who's gay. She's not. Open that bill and you see two and a half grand. What do you think? Uh, we call it brown envelope anxiety. Um, I've, it makes me feel sick. I, I, I um, have got to the lowest ebb I think I've ever been at the moment because right. of this company. And <clears throat> presumably you've tried to get in touch with HMRC and say, this is a mistake, this is wrong, I've sorted it with the other firm, please sort this out. And yeah. what's, what... I have to go back to Concentrix and it, three to five hours on the phone, uh, eventually getting through to be told that uh, <clears throat> was not able to be updated on their systems or it has to be done manually, which can take weeks. There's no time precedent set. Um, so I'm going out of week six into seven now and it can be weeks longer and there's nothing, I've done nothing wrong and they know that yeah. but I'm just not getting my money through. My, my tax credit was cut at the beginning of August. Um, I didn't know why and uh, I had a phone call with them and it took me three to five hours a day for a week to actually get hold of them. They were very rude, they weren't nice at all and obviously when you've got three year old running around it's quite difficult to uh, be on hold for that amount of time. Um, they, I'm losing £64 a week. They've told me that I need to prove that there's nobody living with me, an adult. That's what they, that's what they think. Mm. And I've also got a bill for over £1,000. Um, they think that they've been wrongly paying me since April. Wow. So it's quite stressful. Yes, I've lost my child tax credits and working tax credits, which is the bulk of what I get each month. Is... Yeah. <laughs> and how much are you down by as a result of their, what you say are their mistakes? Um, a little over £600. A month? Yeah. Wow, that is astonishing. It's just, it's a joke, it's like made our life so much, so hard work. Um, they accused me of living with another lady, I've sent the documents back in June, they lost the documents, so again I've had to send documents two weeks ago. I've had no money for two weeks now, I've had to go to a food bank, it's just hard. It's crazy, I mean... You sign declarations and all, stating that you're a single parent, you're living on your own, but yet that's still not good enough. I mean, you're given your words, you know, I just don't know what else you're supposed to do. Mm. I mean, it's just really putting people in difficult situations. Because of this, my housing benefit could be stopped as well, which means that my tenancy could be affected. Well, now the private firm Concentrix has come out fighting after HMRC said it wasn't renewing their contract. In a strongly worded statement, they told us this. We have operated professionally at all times and within the guidance set by HMRC. The HMRC statement not to renew the contract attacks our professional credibility and the commitment of our staff who have performed determinedly despite the issues with HMRC policies and procedures. In addition, throughout the contract, Concentrix has employed good, hard-working people within the UK at Concentrix's expense in order to staff phone lines and handle customer calls which were agreed by HMRC and were based on HMRC assumptions. To be clear, we have answered significantly more calls than planned with HMRC. Throughout the contract we have not been incentivised to make wrong decisions for claimants and in fact would be penalised heavily for failure to adhere to HMRC policies and procedures. Of course, we've asked both HMRC and Concentrix for an interview on the programme. They've both turned us down again. We'll continue to ask them each day. Meanwhile, more of you are getting in touch with your stories. Catherine told us Concentrix stopped her tax credits because they believed she was in a relationship with her lodger. She's not. Joanne told us Concentrix stopped her payments after claiming her two-year-old daughter didn't live with her. And one viewer told us his claim was stopped after he was told he was living with his mother, who died 10 months previously. Uh, thanks for these comments as well. It's you thanking us. I don't normally read anything like this out, but I'm going to on this occasion. Imogen on Facebook, thank you for what you achieved yesterday. Wilma, again on Facebook, well done for playing a significant role in this company's demise. Elizabeth, well done for highlighting this. Charlie says, thanks for helping bring these cowboys down. Let's talk to our reporter, Peter Whittlesey, who is here. So what will happen with Concentrix then? Well, first of all, the latest figures show from the Treasury that around 6,700 claimants had issues with those claims in the last 22 months and 65% of complaints were upheld. Now, it has to be said, this isn't a you've been fired moment. Mm -hmm. The contract still continues until May. Mm -hmm. 
but HMRC have drawn up, in effect, an action plan. And they're telling Concentrics that they've got to improve their, their performance in certain issues, which they say have fallen well below the standards that were required. They're also drafting in 150 extra people to mainly deal with those call centres. People phoned in saying that they were on the phone for literally hours, 59 phone calls in one hour to try and get through and then stuck on the phone forever and not getting through. So they are saying they're increasing resources to tackle that so people can get to their advisors and try and get their situation sorted out. OK, so for all those people watching who have had their child tax credits and working tax credits stopped, what should they do now? Well, that's the big thing. And HMRC are saying that the people who've had their tax credit stopped will be prior prioritised. So I spoke to someone who only had 20 quid to last two weeks. They're the type of people that um, HMRC say they will deal with straight away, try and sort the situation out. They're also saying to those people that if you have any evidence that shows that those claims were wrong, then get in touch with them and your claims and your money will be fully backdated and you won't have lost out. OK, get in touch. People are thinking, oh no, not get in touch again, but I take the point that more people have been employed by HMRC. Peter, thank you very much. Well, MPs have been telling us they have been inundated with complaints from constituents uh, about this. Louise Hay is a Labour MP who told us yesterday she wanted Concentrics to be stripped of its contract. That has not happened. Well, we now know that they won't be renewing their contract when it comes up for renewal in May. And but they're I'm, still processing this stuff over the next six months. They are, but as Peter said, HMRC are re redeploying 150 staff over to make sure that they can deal with the backlog. Serious questions remain as to why this, co this company was given the contract in the first place when it clearly can't run a basic post room or operate their telephony standards, as we've heard people are waiting on hold for upwards of an hour in some cases. And my parliamentary questions have revealed that they breached their performance standards on 120 occasions in the last year. The minister in the House agreed with me last week it was completely unacceptable, their performance, and I'm pleased that HMRC have responded so quickly and announced that the contract will not be renewed. It's brought relief, as you've just heard, to thousands of um, single parents, particularly across the country. It has, but there's still in financial hardship I they mean are. serious you know th the money has been cut they've got bills saying they owe two and a half thousand pounds five thousand pounds what are they going to live on in the meantime well this is it they, I would advise that they get in touch immediately with either their MP or um, local citizens advice mm -hmm. there is a MP's hotline directly to HMRC there never was to Concentrics which was part of the pro part of the problem because HMRC and Concentrics weren't talking to each other on individual cases so if they get in touch with their local MP they can get through to HMRC they can as Peter says get that claim reinstated as quickly as possible and backdated because there are thousands of people who have had their tax credits wrongly stopped by this company precisely because it's been employed on a payment by results contract and when we move on from this what I want the government what, to look sorry, at. Sorry just let's be clear what we mean by payment by results you mean they were concentrics were given a target by HMRC of millions and millions of pounds to draw back to exactly. claw back for the taxpayer and that has led to mistakes being made exactly. because they're aiming for that target. Exactly they're, they're incentivized by profit to cut or completely stop people's tax credits. I don't think that's an appropriate model on which to operate our welfare system. And what I want the government to do is sit back, look at the failings of this contract, and think about whether a payment by results model is appropriate in the welfare system. We've seen equal failings from ATOS, from Maximus, uh, from G4S. I would like this to lead to a full review of the entire model. OK. Um... Do you have any idea, uh, Louise Hay, how long it might... Let, let's say somebody manages to get through to HMRC today, to Concentrics today, saying, I'm one of these people <coughs> who's had my tax credit stopped. Can you reinstate my claim? How long that might take for the money to come back? The waiting times have been really, really poor for Concentrics. Given that there's 150 new staff uh, de redeployed from HMRC, I would hope that this would be able to be treated very urgently and within a couple of days. There's certainly, when I've been able to amplify cases uh, that have come through my office, it's been basically immediate. It should be within a day or two. OK. Um, but I would really suggest that they get in touch and let their MP know urgently that it is an issue so that they can get onto HMRC on their behalf. These people are not going to want to sit on their helpline to Concentrics again when they've already had to do that many times over the last few months. Absolutely. A couple more messages. 
Uh, this is a text from Sherry. I've been uh, battling with concentrics and tax credits for two years. They cut our income by 900 quid a month to start with, without warning, then wrote to us saying we had a £5,000 overpayment. We both had to stop working because the more we worked, the more we owed. I mean, that is just ludicrous. Uh, email from Nicola. I just want to say thank you to your show for highlighting what concentrics have been doing. My tax credits have been stopped for nine weeks now. They're saying that I'm living with the person uh, who was the previous tenant. I have two sons. One is severely disabled. He has cerebral palsy and severe epilepsy. It takes hours on end to get to speak to someone at concentrics, which is so upsetting while I'm trying to look after my boys. I've provided the company with all the information and still, a decision was made that I am not single. I'm devastated and will now have to consider going to food banks. Mm -hmm. I just got a bill from uh, the tax credits people saying I owe them £2,800 because they've overpaid me. And this has to be paid by October. My housing benefit has also stopped. I'm at my wit's end and I'm so glad to see that your show is doing something about this. Serious, serious stress. And this is clearly the result of them being asked to look at undeclared partner fraud that does happen on tax credits and HMRC are right to make sure that the claim is correct. But they've been asked to make sure that people are living with who they say they're living with. So they're clearly looking through the electoral register. Is that they're what's seeing, going on? They're seeing previous tenants on there. They're making assumptions that are incorrect, as you highlighted on the programme yesterday. And they're stopping them completely unfairly. And in many cases, it's taking weeks, if not months, to put that right. This company first came to my attention last year when a constituent of mine had her tax credit stopped while she was in a coma. And months later, it was still not reinstated. HMRC have acted absolutely right in cancelling this contract. I want to see them bring this service back in-house so that this, this service is done by the public sector and not incentivised by profit. Otherwise, we're going to see many more people affected in this way. Thank you very much, Louise. Thanks for Thank coming you. on the programme. Thank you. Uh, you can get in touch. I think you know that by now. Uh, I know you're expecting me to ask about concentrics. Hundreds of mistakes the US firm have made on behalf of HMRC, stopping the tax credits of some of the lowest income families in the country. Uh, concentrics saying people are in relationships with dead pensioners, their brother-in-laws. Uh, in one man's case, he was in a relationship with his grandmother. How do you respond to these cases? Well, as you've seen, uh, HMRC has uh, acted uh, pretty decisively uh, in this, uh, and I'm sure they were correct to do so uh, and, and clearly anyone who is dealing uh, with people who are claiming benefits uh, needs to be needs to be sensitive to uh, to their needs as, as well as obviously uh, enforcing the rules it's, it's what we ask of our own suppliers at the DWP concentrics were working for a different arm uh, of government uh, HMRC but they will obviously uh, demand the same high standards of their suppliers what would you advise these people to do who suddenly find themselves with very 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 little money because their tax credits have been stopped well they should I mean there's an appeal system uh, which they should go to straight away they should contact uh, HMRC and, um, and how should they survive but, in the meantime well the, the faster they can get uh, they can get their if, if they are entitled to these tax credits uh, then they should uh, ensure as, as fast as possible that they receive them it's clear that uh, HMRC is very aware of these problems so I'm sure they're acting to make sure that uh, nobody is is not given benefits for uh, a long period to which they're entitled. Mm. Uh, uh, the, the, the approach from the outsourced firm you said that you know they should be sensitive it, it, it's clear they probably haven't been employed by HMRC which is a government department without a minister having a hugely detrimental impact on families lives it doesn't sound like a government that wants to serve everyone, not just the privileged few. No, I, th I think that's, that's not fair. There, there, there have clearly been, been failures here uh, in one area of, uh, the, of, of, of one contractor working uh, for HMRC. Uh, but the, the, the benefits given out, for example, by uh, my own department, uh, we deal with 22 million people uh, at any time if you include uh, all pensioners and you know, every so often people will obviously challenge their, their benefit payments but we get uh, benefits out uh, competently uh, and regularly to people and in the overwhelming 
uh, majority of cases, uh, that system works well. As I say, people will always challenge individual decisions, but there's a process to uh, appeal against that. So, broadly speaking, uh, the system works very well. Of course, there are problems, as, as there have been, with concentrics. And as I say, HMRC has acted decisively to put this problem at an end. Thank you very much, and thanks for answering those questions on concentrics as well. Thanks for your time. Yeah. Damien Green, who is the Work and Pension Secretary. Well, we've asked both HMRC and Concentrics to talk to us and you a number of times, but they've turned us down uh, on several occasions. So let's talk now to three women who've had their tax credits wrongly stopped. Sarah Bailey is from Stoke-on-Trent, Diane McNamara is from Bristol, and Sandy Beavers is from Fleetwood, and she's uh, there with her four-week-old little baby boy, I think he is, and her cousin as well. Sarah, let me start with you. You had working tax credits and child tax credits stopped financially that is absolutely devastating to you and just tell our audience what you had to do yesterday because money is now so tight um, I've had to quit my job uh, because where I work is in the middle of nowhere um, and obviously I drive um, and I can't afford fuel and I can't afford my car insurance so unfortunately I've had to hand in my notice um, and now I can't work that is unbelievable isn't it how do you feel oh, about yeah, that? It's devastating. Yeah. Um, I'm really upset about it because, to be honest, I really enjoyed um, working. Um, I you know, I haven't had a job for a couple of years, bringing up my daughter, and I finally um, was able to get back into work. Uh, you know, I was financially stable, um, and now I feel like I've gone to work, and now I've had to give up my job, um, basically because of what's happened, because I've got no money whatsoever to support me and my child. Diane, hello. You work 30 hours a week in a care home. Why did Concentric suddenly say you couldn't continue receiving £377 a month? Um, because they said that they had evidence that I had a partner living with me. And do you? No. What was their evidence then? Um, I don't know. They haven't told me. But um, when, they, when they eventually rang me after me trying to contact them for three days, they actually told me they had the name of the person that was supposed to be living with me. And when I asked them if they could tell me who it was, they said yes. And it was actually my female next door neighbour. Oh, and how did she react when she um, found out you were meant to be in a relationship with her? <laughs> she's, she's very upset because um, I've been lucky. I've only had one month's money stopped at the moment. Mm. Um, but they won't talk to me. I've tried to ring them for two days and I can't get a hold of them. I don't know how they came to this conclusion. Um, the tax credits people are very, very nice when I speak to them, but they cannot help you at all. They cannot get in contact with Concentrics at all by email or telephone. So I, I don't know what's happening to my money at the moment. Right. Sandy, hello. Welcome. Um, congratulations on your little boy in the background. Um, you, you're in Fleetwood. You've got two boys and a girl. And like many others, Concentrics thought you two were in a relationship. When you asked them who you were supposed to be in a relationship with, what did they tell you? They told me that it was, I was in a relationship with my six-year-old son. And when you presumably choked down the phone at them, how did they then respond? They just said, they just put me on hold and wanted to um, look at the records, which they then told me that they can see it down on records that I have um, a claim for my son, which is Harvey. Right. You're down, I think, £117 a week and HMRC say you owe them £2,500. How do you, how do you, how is that affecting you? It's not just £2,500, there's another sum of... 6,400 as well, which they're saying that I owe. Wow. They're also wanting me to pay it back by the 27th to the 11th, 2016, which, which is totally impossible. Yeah, absolutely. What do you think about the fact that HMRC will not be renewing this company's contract? I think it's absolutely disgusting. Everything, everything about it should just be dealt with, really. Yeah. Sarah, the, the, does, is it any consolation yeah. to you that Concentrics won't have their contract renewed when it comes to an end in May? Um, not really. Um, I just hopefully that you'll get everybody sorted who's obviously in this position, to be honest, um, and obviously not take anybody else on um, who obviously because can't deal with it. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much, all of you. Really appreciate you coming on the programme. Okay. Um, and... <sighs>
you know, let's hope you get your claims reinstated as soon as possible. Thank you. Cheers, Sarah. Thank you. Cheers, Diane. Thank you very much. Thank Cheers, you. Sandy. Thanks for coming on the Thank programme. You. Really Thank appreciate you. it. We're going to talk now to Sharon. It's not her real name. Sharon's got in touch with us. She, we're not saying where she is in the country either. She's got in touch with us because she says she used to work for Concentrix earlier this year. Sharon, hello. Thanks for talking to us. Um, tell us how it was from the inside working for the company. Um, at times it was very stressful. Um, at times, a lot of the time, we did not have the tools to complete the job that we needed to do. Um, I really did feel for the claimants and I understood the position they were coming from. Um, so when the decision was made that, for instance, they would say, um, you need to suspend these payments, I would do anything in my power to not do that, even if it came to um, not working that case, just leaving it, um, because I just didn't feel right doing it at all. Um, I actually just ended up leaving in the end just because I couldn't do it to people. Really? Yeah, I just, I, I mean, I understand. I mean, I've been on benefits myself. I'm a low wage earner. I understand the sort of money and how, how much of a difference it makes to people. Mm. And I just couldn't imagine having four kids and someone clicking a button in some wee call centre and that, you know, changing you for the next couple of months. It just didn't feel right to me at all. Um, lots of people who got in touch with us said they were told that there was evidence they were in a relationship with you know, mm -hmm. people that they were not in relationships with, i.e. they weren't single and therefore their tax credits needed to be reduced. Where, mm -hmm. would, where would you look for that evidence? OK, so we would uh, take calls like that a lot. Um, what that would be would be that the, a name would flag up onto our system. Right. Um, the resource of where that name came from now, um, that would be all varied sort of things, like maybe a letter's been sent or... I mean, obviously, from our position, we just saw a name on the system. Once that name flags up, um, a check would flag up, and that's just how that would happen, which has me meant that they would need to send us then the evidence to prove that this wasn't the case. I see. So it wasn't like you were going to the electoral register and finding these names. It would just... It, the, the computer would say no, effectively, and then you would carry through the process of, of stopping the payments. Effectively, yes. Yeah. I mean, obviously, when it comes to how the information came onto the system, me and myself, I... Um, most of us were very low-wage low uh, workers, and when it comes to where the evidence is coming from, as far as we're concerned, um, we wouldn't understand where HMRC would gather that information. Yeah. We just go by, basically, common knowledge, which is if there's been a previous tenant or something like that, we would go down that road. Understood. But that's the yeah. OK. Sharon, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Uh, thanks for getting in touch with us. And obviously, Sharon is just one of somebody who used, one of the number of employees who used to work there. We are continuing to try to talk to the boss of Concentrix on the programme and we'll uh, give them a call each day. Right, I'm going to read you quite a long email now from someone who says they used to work at Concentrix, the US firm employed by HMRC to try and cut tax credit fraud, but which has also ended up making many, many mistakes and cutting the tax credits of people who they shouldn't have. I'm a former employee of Concentrix. I was employed in September 2014 when the contract began, when the campaign began, he says, actually. We were told at the beginning that we were employed to get back up to £2 billion in fraudulent tax credit claims. The campaign itself was delayed by three to four months because we didn't have any operational computers or phone systems. When we originally sent out undeclared partner letters, we were told by Concentrix to name the people they are being accused of living with. But HMRC told us they never named anyone. We received calls from claimants stating that the person they were accused of being in a relationship with has, was, either A, died, B, a former occupant, C, uh, broken down marriage or partnership. And the most shocking of these was when the person named was actually in prison due to sexually assaulting the claimant and her children. I can assure you the agents on the phones are only being told what to do. And whenever we raised an issue, we were always told it would be looked into with little or no feedback returned. It was very difficult to deal with as your conscience kicked in. Agents would try their best to get some form of positive resolution for claimants, but when a claimant has been told to pay back tax credits, it was as if there was no turning back, or they would make it extraordinarily difficult to appeal it. Concentrics expected too much from their staff, but also HMRC must be held equally accountable for this issue, as they outsource this matter simply to save money. 
we were aware that HMRC staff who did the same job were earning sometimes three times as much as their equivalent at Concentrics. Very easy for politicians to come on TV and lambast agents for their lack of support. I can unequivocally say that agents were not given the proper support uh, required to assist claimants fully. Concentrics and HMRC have a lot of explaining to do, but never blame the guy or girl on the front line who most likely empathises with the claimants more than they realise. Thank you very much for that, Sean. Really appreciate that insight.